Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Brevera Media Company. Today we've got another vintage map for you guys. It is a map of Detroit, Michigan that was originally produced in 1895. We're going to examine and explore this map and other maps of Detroit, but before we do, let's give a brief historical overview of the background of Detroit and how it came to be, uh, and then we'll, we'll go into it and zoom into these maps. Uh, Alright, to start, the city of Detroit was founded on July 24th, 1701. The city and the surrounding area, though, were, was originally inhabited by several Native American tribes as early as 11,000 years ago. The tribes that resided in the area were the Huron, the Odawa, the Potawatomi, and the Iroquois. Uh, the first Europeans did not reach and discover the area until French missionaries and traders worked their way around the League of Iroquois, uh, with whom they were at war with other Iroquois tribes around the 1630s time frame. The city itself was named by French colonists referring to the Detroit River. They called it Le Detroit, Le Detroit de Lac Erie, meaning the Strait of Lake Erie. Uh, on the shores of the strait in 1701, the French officer Antoine de la Mothe Cadillac, notice the last name, or that name Cadillac, I, I thought that was kind of cool, along with uh, this French officer, along with 51 French people and French Canadians, founded a settlement called Fort Pontchartrain de Detroit, naming it after Louis Philippe uh, Comte de Pontchartrain, Chancellor of Pontchartrain, essentially. Uh, France offered free land to colonists to attract families to Detroit when it reached a total population of 800 in 1765. It was the largest European settlement between Montreal and New Orleans, uh, both of which were also French settlements. Uh, the region's economy was based on the lucrative fur trade in which numerous Native American people also partook. Then the French near Indian War broke out, uh, which was a massive military conflict between British and French and Indian forces. Uh, British troops were able to control the settlement in 1760, for which they shortened the city's name down to just Detroit. As... As the French and Indian War continued, several Native American tribes launched counterattacks on the British forces in the area that included Pontiac's Rebellion in 1763 and the Siege of Fort Detroit. Uh, these attempts, though, were to recapture the area proved to be a failure. Uh, under British control for about 36 years, eventually Great Britain would surrender the territory sometime after the American Revolution, for which uh, this led to the signing of the Jay Treaty of 1796. And the Jay Treaty was uh, and established the northern border of uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, from 1805 to 1847, Detroit was the capital of Michigan, first as a territory, then as a state. During the War of 1812, Detroit was surrendered to British troops in the Siege of Detroit, uh, the Battle of Frenchtown in 1813 was a United States effort to retake the city for which uh, American troops suffered their highest fatalities out of any battle uh, of the War of 1812. Uh, Detroit, Detroit would be uh, recaptured by the United States later that year. After the conclusion of the War of 1812, Detroit became officially incorporated as a city in 1815. Prior to the American Civil War, the city's access to the Canadian-U.S. border made it a, a very key stop for refugee slaves gaining freedom to the north uh, along the Underground Railroad. Uh, many went across the Detroit River to Canada to escape pursuit of uh, slave catchers. Uh, numerous men from... Uh, also regarding the Civil War, numerous men from Detroit volunteered to fight uh, for the Union during the American Civil War, including the 24th Michigan Infantry Regiment, uh, which fought with honor and suffered 82% casualties at the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, 
Detroit throughout the 19th century was sometimes referred to as the Paris uh, of the West because of its architecture, grand avenues in Paris, its style, and also for Washington Boulevard being electrified by Thomas Edison. Uh, the city had grown steadily from the 1830s with the rise of shipping, shipbuilding, manufacturing industries. Uh, it, it strategically was located along the Great Lakes waterway. Uh, Detroit emerged really a, as a major port and transportation hub. In 1896, a thriving carriage trade prompted Henry Ford to build his first automobile in a rented workshop on Mack Avenue, thus establishing the Ford Motor Company in 1903 and launching Detroit into becoming an automotive city. All right, so we gave you a brief background into the history of Detroit. Let's look at this map, and we'll look at a also a bird's eye perspective map of Detroit, and we'll kind of just explore and examine it. Uh, if we look at this map, this is the 1895, 1895 map of Detroit. We can see that uh, buildings are actually labeled on this map. We have numbered uh, locations for these various buildings, and we'll go up to the key. Look at all these reference points. We've got depots, we've got hotels labeled, places of amusement, prominent buildings, institu uh, institutions, and churches. Let's go down to our numbered list. This is the downtown Detroit area. And if we look right around here, we see 20. Let's look, this, this is a corner building. We can look up the bird's eye map and see what this building is, 20. It's either 20 or 15 is this labeling. These numbers are a little bit clustered, but let's look at what 20 and 15 is. We've got a market right here, and we've got City Hall labeled right here. My guess is that is City Hall, considering its location. And when I looked on a bird's eye perspective map, here's a bird's eye perspective map of Detroit, 1889, same time frame. We see that same cross section. Look at the look how big this building is, and look at the st the the flag hanging at the top. My guess is that the assumption that that is City Hall is correct, uh, given the flag hanging at the top and it's uh, the, the size of the building. Uh, we can see the the half moon shape extending down, and if we just reiterate, see that half moon shape right here. We can, we can just use that as a point of reference. So this is definitely City Hall. You can see how it's labeled right here. We can see Cadillac written right, Cadillac Square. That's so cool that we talked about in, in, the, in the history, Antoine de la Mothe Cadillac uh, back in 1701. And uh, I mean, obviously we know the car today and we know that Detroit is a, an automotive city. So I mean, a lot of influence. You see all these streets labeled. What's 34? This is on Antietam. Uh, what is this? Great. I'm sorry, Great Twat. Uh, 34. Let's look up 34. Oh, it's a church, Trinity Church. Very cool. So that's a little church right there. Let's see what some of these other buildings are. Seven, right here, just uh, ahead of City Hall. We probably looked that up. On the bird's eye. Uh, that's a hotel, Griswold Hotel. Let's look on the bird's eye. So we don't. The hotel is located generally in this location. Uh, the bird's eye doesn't give us numbered locations, so we have to use the other map. But I can generally assume that hotel is right around here, probably on this this major street side. Um, it would be my best guess. Let's go back. 21's a post office. Let's look, uh, let's keep looking for different buildings. Here's 28. This is close to a railroad depot. I'm guessing has something to do with the railroad. 28. Nope, I was wrong. That's a church. Wow. Church is really close to the railroad. I was way off. Let's look at this one, six right here. We've got six and 10, six and 10, very close to the river side. 
That's another hotel. That's a Griffin house. Okay. What's 10? Another hotel. Look, at, notice the hotels are located very close to the riverfront. Probably because people who weren't from the area who were trading and involved with commerce needed to find somewhere to stay very quickly. I, I've been noticing that trend on this map. 41. Let's see what 41 is down here. Oh, it's a museum of art. Close to the river. Kind of a tourist attraction. Right here, 41. Very close to the riverfront. 26. Let's look at 26. And that's another church. A lot of churches, when you look at these maps, I mean... That's a common theme. They love labeling churches on these old maps. And uh, I, I've noticed that many times. Look at this. A U.S. Marine Hospital. Labeled right here. Very close to the riverside. And we've even got... These look like ferry routes. Yeah. See, we've got a ferry right here. The Walkerville Ferry. You can see kind of drift over here from... from I'm just saying Water Street? Yeah, Water Street. I mean, this, th these maps are amazing. We can see the uh, measurements of distance uh, da uh, across from the Detroit River. Three miles right here, two miles right there. We've got Detroit International Exposition Grounds. Fort Wayne. So cool. Love these maps. I mean, I do metal detecting videos to help metal detectors uh, look for certain areas. I mean, just, this is a treasure trove of information. 18. What's 18 back here? All by its lonesome self. That's a hospital. Harper's Hospital. All the way back here by Martin Place. Kind of close to Willis and Canfield. We've got reservoirs, la reservoirs labeled, Cass Park. Wonderful map. Wonderful map. Lots, A lot more information on this map compared to the bird's eye. If we look at the bird's eye, I wish they, they – I mean, the illustrations are great to see what kind of what the landscape looked like in the railways and how they came in. You can see this railway – uh, coming across, we can see the factories lined up along the railway, obviously dis distribute and take goods. We can see that the railway comes down to a depot all the way by the riverfront. We see the factories. They're always lined up next to the railroad just because of uh, the amount of time it takes to put goods on and take goods off in transportation. Uh, but I wish they labeled buildings on these bird's eyes. It, it, I, I don't know why they they didn't. But, you know, the bird's eyes are nice. You know, you get kind of a, a look at, at the Detroit River and what was going on, the river boats. A lot of detail, you know. I would say there's more detail along the waterfront than there is, obviously, in the background, except for the fact that you get to see the railways and how they, they came into the Detroit River. But I like this map, personally, a lot more. 1895, I mean, the parks are labeled... Uh, the waterways, uh, the boulevards, uh, really. Look at this, Peninsular Car work, Works. I just realized, I just saw that. And it's right along the rail line. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love doing videos like these all the time where we talk about the history of a city. We, we do vintage maps on Detroit, on Michigan, of different states throughout the United States. We talk about history. We just did a video series on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it was something like eight different videos uh, that we did, and it was very, very popular. So if you like history, you like vintage maps, and you like hanging out, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. We upload videos all the time. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this map, or you'd like to leave a comment about uh, the history of Detroit. Leave a comment below, like this video, share this video, and I will see you guys soon. Okay, take care. All right, bye.